friends, my name is Hannah Woodland and I am the Communications Associate for the California Nevada Annual Conference. When we gather for annual conference in just a few weeks, the Board of Trustees will be bringing an item of legislation before the entire annual conference session relating to the disaffiliation of six United Methodist congregations within our conference. Reverend Luke Ham, President of the Conference Board of Trustees, is here with me today to explain how we reached this point in process. Thanks, Hannah. It's good to be with you. I want to begin by first expressing my gratitude to my fellow board members, as well as Bishop Sally Dick, our staff liaison, Diane Knudsen, our cabinet liaison, Shinya Goto, and last but not least, assistant to the bishop, Mike Harrell. All of these folks have been working very hard on behalf of you, the members of the California Nevada Annual Conference, in order to bring this legislation for disaffiliation before you at this year's ACS. Countless hours have been poured into this process by a wide scope of individuals, and at all times, those working on this have done so with care, respect, humility, and grace. We fully understand the immense responsibility that has been handed to us, and none of us take this situation lightly. Throughout the process, we've heard feedback from folks on many different sides of the issue, We've gotten feedback from those who consider themselves to be conservative, those who consider themselves to be progressive, and those who don't fit comfortably with either of those labels. We've closely examined what other annual conferences have done in their contexts and tried to adapt the best and most equitable practices to meet the needs and contexts that we have here in California, Nevada. As many of you know, the United Methodist Church has been grappling with conflicts related to human sexuality for decades. This debate finally led to the introduction of a disaffiliation process at a special called General Conference in 2019. As part of that conference, a provision was added to our Book of Discipline, originally anticipated as a means for progressive congregations to separate from the denomination, the trend ended up shifting with conservative and traditionalist churches and congregations predominantly seeking disaffiliation. Some of these congregations are departing to align with the newly established Global Methodist Church, and others may choose to be a part of a different expression of Methodism or become independent congregations. Last annual conference session, the Conference Board of Trustees reported the terms and conditions for disaffiliation that we have developed. It should be noted that the Conference Board of Trustees has the sole authority to set the terms and conditions for disaffiliation based upon the principles laid out in paragraph 2553 of the Book of Discipline. A recent ruling by the Judicial Council clarified that it is not within the authority of the annual conference session to change any of the terms and conditions for disaffiliation set by the trustees. The six congregations which will be presented for disaffiliation in our conference are Anderson Trinity UMC, that is located in the Great Northern District, Battle Mountain UMC in the Great Northern District, Montague UMC in the Great Northern District, Firebaugh Mendota UMC in the Central Valley District, Riverdale UMC, Central Valley District, and Weldon UMC in the Central Valley District. I'd like to briefly describe the process that led to each of these congregations reaching this point. First, the church council or administrative board of each congregation initiated the process by voting to request the initiation of a formal time of discernment towards potential disaffiliation. After that, at least two discernment sessions were held to provide a space for reflection and open dialogue. These sessions were facilitated by a district superintendent in partnership with conference lay staff. Part of this discernment time went over the costs to disaffiliate, which include meeting pension and other legal obligations for the conference, 
as well as paying 20% of the fair market value of the church property. I want to be clear that the trustees were given the discretion to set the percentage to be paid of the fair market value of each property. There are some conferences in the connection who required a lower figure and others who arrived at a lar much larger percentage than ours. I assure you that a great amount of care and time went into us deciding 20% as the figure for our conference. We know some might feel this number is too high and others too low. So I wanna just give you a, a small sampling of the many questions we considered when trying to arrive at an equitable number. Questions like, how much money do we need to have in reserves if a lawsuit is filed against a congregation that disaffiliated, but the incident in question took place before the disaffiliation was complete? Another question, how does the conference provide a space for longtime UMC members in a disaffiliating congregation who wish to remain as part of the UMC? For example, how do we provide ministry to those who want to remain in the UMC after their congregation uh, voted to dis disaffiliate, but there was an 80-20 split in that vote? Because in many places throughout our conference, there's not a existing congregation right nearby that they can then go and participate in. One final question that, that I want to share with you as many of the examples. How do we honor the wishes of the saints who shared resources with their congregation, believing that these gifts would continue to support the work and ministry of the United Methodist Church? both in their geographic area and throughout the connection at large. Again, these are just three of the many questions we had to ask ourselves and consider. You may be wondering how we plan to use the funds that we receive. Well, in addition to making sure pension liabilities are covered, a small portion of these funds will be used for any legal or governmental fees associated with the transfer of property and title. The majority of the funds will be held in trust for seven years, so we can have them at our disposal for unexpected legal costs or other liabilities from the time the congregation was part of the UMC. After seven years, these funds can then be deployed for missional use. Back to the steps of the process. Following the discernment sessions at each congregation, the church council or administrative board could request a church conference to vote on disaffiliation. Each congregation on the legislation before you at ACS did indeed hold a church conference under the supervision of their district superintendent and voted above the two-thirds majority needed to disaffiliate. So that brings us to you, the voting members of the 2023 annual conference session. At this point in the process, the Book of Discipline now requires the annual conference session to pass disaffiliation legislation by a simple majority. To be clear, no church disaffiliation will be complete until all of the terms and conditions have been met. The provision that allows for disaffiliations sunsets on December 31st, 2023, meaning that churches that haven't met the terms and conditions by that date will not be able to disaffiliate regardless of the vote at annual conference session. It is my hope that this information has been helpful to you as you review this important legislation. Thank you, Luke. This is such a tough thing we're grappling with. Uh, what is the best way for a member of the annual conference to contact you or the trustees if they have any follow-up questions on this legislation? Yeah, folks should absolutely feel free to reach out to me if they have additional questions. And the best way to do that is via email. And my email is pretty simple. It's my name, Luke, L-U-K-E, dot ham, H-A-M, 
at cnumc.org. And if you go on the conference website and look at the clergy page, you can also find it listed there. Yeah, great. Well, thank you, Luke. This is such a tough thing, and it's great to have all of this information to help our voting members uh, really prayerfully consider all of this tough legislation, not just with disaffiliations, but across the board as we prepare to gather uh, in just a few weeks.